Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of What's Driving Token Prices. I'm your host, Katie Talati, Director of Research at ARCA. For those joining for the first time, I'm responsible for analyzing and identifying digital asset opportunities for ARCA's funds. As part of our research, my team and I examine token prices and the market events that act as catalysts for price change. Based on our research and market events over the past week, here are some notable token price movements and what we think drove these moves. As a reminder, this commentary is not intended to be investment advice, investment research, or a recommendation. Please consult your investment professional for your own circumstances. Well, so uh, this week has definitely been eventful as usual today. FTX potentially found up to $5 billion in assets that can be recovered as part of the bankruptcy. Um, DCG was sent a letter publicly by the Winklevoss twins over at Gemini. And yeah, there seems to be no resolution there. What's with happening with the DCG, um, you know, potential um, liabilities and Genesis. So we're still kind of waiting tight and seeing uh, that in the market. In the meantime, uh, discussions around ETH, uh, ETH's next upgrade, Shanghai, are heating up, which is really exciting for us since that will enable withdrawals, which is definitely something we're watching. Uh, but on to some token-specific news. Uh, it has definitely been another fun week. Um, first up, I actually have a, a, a double for you guys right here. We've got Huobi Token and uh, Tron. Um, so uh, just quick context, Huobi Token or Huobi is a centralized exchange based mostly in Asia. And Tron is a layer one protocol run by Justin Sun, who you may have seen in the news. Okay, so late last week, the rumor mill began flying on Twitter that centralized exchange Huobi was experiencing issues following reported layoffs. Um, about 20% of their staff were laid off, a shutdown of internal communications channel, and massive withdrawals from the exchange. In response to the instability, Justin Sun, the founder of Tron, um, and also an owner slash board member of Huobi, I don't know if you recall, I think I talked about this a few months ago, but he ended up buying a majority stake in the, um, in the exchange. Um, bought out from one of the co-found original co-founders. So Justin Sun actually transferred $100 million of his own stablecoin money reportedly from Binance to Huobi um, in a move to instill confidence in the exchange, um, basically showing that he did not think that there were any issues with the reserves, that, you know, a potential bank run would be only speculative. Um, you know, this has been kind of the, the trend though, right? Like a lot of people have been concerned over Binance, over Huobi, over all other major centralized exchanges since FTX, that there might be some instability that, you know, assets may not totally be there. So from time to time, we've definitely seen a lot of these, uh, you know, bank, you know, semi-bank runs, I guess. So it's unclear if some of these internal issues have been resolved in terms of, you know, staff have been, you know, talking about the layoffs and the, uh, the uh, shutdown of internal comms. Um, but Huobi has seen over $100 million in outflows over the last seven days. So we'll keep tracking that. Um, but on this news, Huobi is down 7% for the week, and Tron is up 1.4%. All right, Luxrare. So at uh, Luxrare, they are the NFT marketplace. Um, I'll, I'll wish them a happy birthday as of yesterday. It was their one year uh, since launch. Um, but uh, the um, they've basically been struggling significantly as of late um, since the launch of rival marketplace Blur, which is, um, you know, they've been offering zero fees and potential of an airdrop. So they've had a lot more volume go over to them. Um, and overall, the NFT market has really suffered a lot. So volumes in general have just been compressed in that market. Um, so Nulixware has definitely fallen kind of by the wayside, especially with Pseudoswap, X2, Y2, and uh, now Blur. So the Luxware founder posted an announcement yesterday regarding the V2 launch of the protocol um, and talked about how this is going to come soon. It's, and it includes an aggregator and a mobile platform, which I know a lot of NFT traders would love that functionality. They also are going to be adding additional utility to their Lux token via payments, mint opportunities, and more. So very poten potentially pretty bullish for looks in the you know short to medium term since they've really like fallen here quite a bit um just to give you guys some context while nft trading volumes have fallen significantly since the highs in february 2022 they posted about um they did about 1.1 billion in total volume in december and blur took about 40 percent cent uh, 47 percent of that volume um more than open and looks rare has actually slipped to only doing about 11 percent of that so really, you know, quite a difference there. Um, you know, ha we haven't really seen looks uh, move much on this news, but they're up 3.2% for the week. Um, might be more of a result of just lagging the recent rally. 
All right. Uh, we have Gala, um, which I don't think I've talked about before, but Gala Games, they're a blockchain-based gaming project. Um, they've soared in the last week, um, which many thought it was actually a simple short squeeze. Um, in fact, the project has had several positive announcements in the past few days, including hiring the ex-head designer of Farmville. If you don't remember what Farmville is, I Google it because you're probably really young. Um, if you don't, uh, so Farmville, um, they acquired a mobile gaming studio that has $20 million or 20 million users. And they're, uh, they've been shifting their tokenomics model from a play to earn to more of a gas fee model. Um, so all of these potential, all of these announcements plus the potential for future games has really, um, kicked off the excitement for the Gala token, which has soared this week. It's up 112%, which is absolutely insane, but great to see. Um, and very healthy, obviously, to see pockets of um, pockets of outperformance like that in the market right now. So that's all I have for you guys this week. I hope you enjoyed our insights. Tune in here again next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific to hear what's driving token prices.